an MPD leak exists that is making some people freak out. Now, the MPD for November officially releases tomorrow. Matt Piscatello, the one who usually gives us all of the details on the gaming side of the MPD, uh, usually details everything on Tuesday. He already has the data now. Today would be the day that he's compiling the data uh, and getting out all the different uh, forms and, and different you know, graphs or whatever he wants to put together from that data when he releases it publicly tomorrow for the gaming side of things. Now remember, the MPD tracks everything in the United States. It's not just a gaming-specific thing, but for gaming purposes, that's what we care about. And the interesting thing I, I've seen, and I initially heard about this in a comment on uh, a video I made yesterday, was that, you know, Switch had a bad month because it was performing underneath the PlayStation 4 by 120,000 units. Well... The data's in, and uh, let's just say that is a really interesting way to summarize up the performance of Nintendo Switch. They're not wrong, at least based on the data I have now, but uh, it's not exactly um, a bad thing. Let me explain. So the leak essentially says this. And again, this is a leak. This is not the confirmed final data, although these leaks that usually happen a couple days beforehand are typically correct because it's coming from people who have access to the MPD already uh, but are not, uh, not supposed to, anyways, be releasing public numbers yet. Anyways, basically year-on-year, year, Switch is up 75% in sales. That means 75% better than it performed last November. Last November, it performed pretty well. So being up 75% on that is pretty amazing. Switch is down 39% according to this leak. PlayStation 4 is down 13%. Xbox One is only down 3% and then other, which would be like NES Classics, NES Classic, uh, stuff like that, PlayStation Classic, which I guess is new. Although I think that released this month, uh, is down 6%. Uh, the top selling physical releases according to this leak were Red Dead Redemption 2, I mean duh, Black Ops 4, Call of Duty, what a surprise, and then Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, hello. <laughs> uh, but assuming that all this data is true, someone was able to extrapolate the numbers. Now it's interesting when we talk about these numbers here because the MPD does not actually give us exact numbers anymore. That means in the entire life of Nintendo Switch, there has never been numbers reported by the MPD. It has been many, many years since the MPD gave us numbers. This was at request of the uh, platform holders that exact figures were not given. So that being said, these figures are estimations. However, they're estimations because what the MPD report does do is it says, oh, it's an increase over last year, which was an increase over the year or decrease. This is, well, and it go basically people are able to track these up and downs all the way back to when they used to release actual sales reports on older platforms. So when the sales get compared month to month, year to year, they're able to go back far enough that if you actually keep track of it, you can get a pretty good approximation of what the numbers were. Now, this is why it's important to understand that these numbers we're gonna you're gonna hear are, these approximations are pretty accurate based on very very old sales data that you've had to track every single month, year over year, when making these comparisons. But somebody did all the math, threw it all together, and these are the rough estimations that were come up with based on this leak. And it is that PlayStation 4 led November with 1,478,000 units sold. Right behind that was Nintendo Switch at 1,356,000 units. And then behind that, this is a very tight month by the way, Xbox One at 1,342,000 units. This is the first time that all three major platform holders this generation have been over 1 million in a single month. So that's notable as well. The systems in general were selling well, although obviously Xbox One uh, and PlayStation 4, particularly with a 13% drop, had technically worse numbers than last year, showing a slight decline probably as those systems are starting to get to the end of the life. Well, Nintendo Switch saw a 75% increase, meaning that it didn't sell over a million in the U.S. last November, but it did this time, and uh, it did was able to become the number two best-selling system instead of the number three. So good on Nintendo for that. Now, again, 
I have to stress this because a lot of people that brought these numbers up to me uh, that I've been trying to verify for about the past, I don't know, 18 hours or so, uh, have been kind of touting this as because the Nintendo Switch, despite Pokemon, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee's release, uh, couldn't top PlayStation 4 as a negative, which makes no sense to me. Uh Nintendo Switch has never really impacted PlayStation 4 sales, right? The entire time that Switch has been, you know, skyrocketing in sales and all that the past year and a half, PlayStation 4 sales have stayed really, really high as well. So there hasn't been a lot of crossover in terms of people buying a Switch instead of a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 4 instead of a Switch. In fact, there's actually a lot of crossover where people own both platforms and that's their way to game there's pc switch owners there's playstation 4 switch owners xbox switch owners etc obviously you still have people who just buy into one system uh, right now i currently only have one system in my house although i've used to have an xbox and probably will have another one and a playstation 4 here over the next year but that's besides the point what i am trying to get at here is that these numbers are not bad at all you can't have an increase of 75 percent year over year and call that bad I mean, think about that. That That's 75% is almost a 100% increase. That would mean if you slice those numbers in half, Nintendo sold what? You know, 800,000 units last <laughs> last November. And this year, thanks to Pokemon, it sold, you know, almost 1.4 million. Hard to be upset at those figures just because they finished behind PlayStation 4. And yes, I know that the, the touting is, oh, PlayStation 4 didn't have any big exclusives. I don't know. Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty are pretty big games. I know they're not exclusive, but those are going to move units. And lo and behold, the two systems those games are on moved a lot of units. Is that a shocker here? I mean, are we supposed to ignore that those games do have... Im like? If anything, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4 show how much AAA third-party support actually matters and why, if those games were on Switch, Switch might have been the top dog because you would have had people wanting to play those games on the go. So, again, AAA third-party games are actually important for console sales. I've been saying this for years and years and years, and it's one of the major things Nintendo lacks that would honestly put their systems at astronomical numbers if they could have all the great stuff they have going now plus the AAA third-party support. But again, there's various reasons why that hasn't happened. So, yeah, these sales are really good. Uh, Nintendo Switch is killing it, uh, assuming these numbers are true. Now, we'll get more exact figures, a, a, better, a better idea how well Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee sold, and all that. We'll get all those figures tomorrow, plus Nintendo. And, like, these figures, you know, these rumored figures are really, really good. So Nintendo is likely to come out and give us updated numbers. Now, remember, at the end of Cyber Monday, they did tell us that Lifetime to date, Switch had sold 8.2 million in just the U.S., and that Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee sold 1.5 million in the U.S. But, you know, those that wasn't the whole of November numbers, so Nintendo might give us another update tomorrow, because usually when the MPD comes out, companies, if they had a very, very good month, will come out and tout just how good that month really was, uh, so I expect to see some pretty uh, good numbers from Nintendo tomorrow, at least based on the numbers they had already given us for just like a five-day period of November. So, in other words, uh, yeah, I think things are going well for Switch, and I don't think that it finishing behind PlayStation 4 is indicative of anything. The only thing I could think of on why people are saying this is because they want Switch to fail, um, I guess. <laughs> I mean, how uh, you can't have a 75% sales increase year over year and call that a failure or call Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee not a system seller when that sold more units than Mario and Zelda combined last holiday. So I, the, the, the bottom line is that Nintendo Switch is doing great. And anyone who likes to tell you anyways cares way too much about console wars and somehow thinks 122,000 uh, unit difference when all the systems were around 1.4 million uh, really, truly, honestly matters when it doesn't. I I'm actually happy for all three systems because you know what that means? All three systems are healthy as of now. Remember how like the Xbox One was so far behind the PlayStation 4 and blah, 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 blah. Well, I mean, look at this. The holiday numbers are tight, meaning that Xbox One has gained a little bit of traction, at least. I don't want to say it's gained ground. The PlayStation 4 is still selling it, but it's gained some traction. And what that means is people who like Xbox 
have reasons to buy Xbox now, probably due to Red Dead Redemption 2 running best on Xbox One X, but still, it's a reason to buy an Xbox One X. PlayStation 4 obviously still has all their killer exclusives over the past few years, especially, uh, and obviously Nintendo Switch has all of their exclusives, you know, not just the Pokemon Let's Go Peach Let's Go Eevee, they have all the 2017 exclusives, there were some this year, Octopath Travelers and, you know, Kirby Star Allies, I think, are ones that are probably worth owning, in my opinion, and then on top of that, you know, we had Smash coming up, you know, that released in December and the December numbers because if Smash Bros broke records in the United States, which it seems to have broken records everywhere else, so if it broke records in the U.S., it's possible that Switch might sell even more in December than it did last month. And last month had the Black Friday through Cyber Monday period, which is where Nintendo sees a massive chunk of sales. Now, to put this even in perspective, for just the month of November, uh, that one point you know three five six million units sold for Switch. I mean, they had only sold like what was it two or three million over. Over the first half of the year so in one month they already matched like you know an entire quarter worth of sales for them from earlier this year in one month and remember this quarter isn't just november it includes october it includes december so in just the u.s alone nintendo potentially uh might move oh, I don't know, four, five million this quarter, which is quite a bit. And then you add in the sales from other territories and you could be looking at Nintendo Switch, you know, potentially moving closer to 10 million units this holiday, which would be not necessarily on track to hit 20 million. Uh, but then again, if they have Fire Emblem Landing, if New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe keeps the momentum going, what happens if they sell an extra million in January in just the U.S.? What happens if they sell an extra million another month because of Fire Emblem? It, there's some there's some potential here to get close to those 20 million figures Nintendo has out there. But it's hard to really be upset here. I mean, Nintendo Switch had a 75% increase according to these numbers, so it's still behind PlayStation 4. You know what that means? PlayStation 4 has just been consistently doing astronomical numbers uh, every single holiday, and it really has been since day one. So uh, that's you know, wh wh there's no reason to knock PlayStation 4 for Switch to be successful. Like all three platforms were highly successful in November, and I think that's important to keep in mind. And you shouldn't really care who's on top as long as the company that you are shipping, the company that you uh, believe in, the company that you are a fan of, is is doing well. It doesn't matter if they're on top or not. Okay. PlayStation 4 won the generation. There's no, there's no denying this. It's fine. Let them win the generation. It's, it's, it's okay. Everyone looks like they're happy right now, at least based on sales. So that's a pretty sweet world to be in because it, it's pretty rare that we've been in a situation where three platforms together are all performing well at the exact same time. Like early, you know, last generation with Xbox 360, not counting Wii U, of course. Xbox 360, Wii, and PlayStation 3, it was Xbox 360 and Wii just coming, firing out the gates. And then Wii kind of fell off after two to three years. And then PlayStation 3 picked up momentum. And then it was PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 doing well. So it's been rare that we've had all three platform holders doing well at the same time. And it's happening right now, this holiday series season. So um, this is an exciting time to be a gamer. That's what that tells me. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Robogents from Nintendo Prime, and if you like this video, you know what to do, and if you dislike the video, I mean, that sucks. I guess hit the dislike button. Be sure to enter our Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Nintendo Switch giveaway. Whew. You know what? I'll just catch you guys in the next one.